Ding dong, the witch is dead, Vince Russo is out of power. I'm John Rentham with a retro review of WCW Nitro from October 30th, 2000. Thankfully, we only have a couple more months also of Mark Madden on commentary. It's a shame that he was on commentary for so goddamn long. I understand he was a heel commentator, he should try being a good commentator, or even a competent one. But at least Shivani and uh, Scott Hudson were there to pick up the slack. Now, at this point, though, even with Russo out of power, WCW was fucking flatlining. They, they were basically a dead company. They had some good talents. They had some good ideas they were trying to implement, but everything was just beyond repair. You had the AOL Time Warner merger and all this stuff. So, yeah, I got about five more months of this program to watch, along with Thunder and then also the pay-per-views. Yep, I'm sticking with this shit till the end. Unfortunately, there are a few storylines that they still got going that were absolute dog shit. So, a new CEO will be revealed tonight. It's Ric Flair. It's obviously Ric Flair. Of course it was going to be Ric Flair. We have Rain Hoovy versus Jindrak and O'Hare. Conan and Tigress on commentary. Tigress should have never been allowed to speak at all. She just wasn't a good TV personality. Madden was insufferable comparing um, Jindrak and O'Hare to the great heel tag teams of all time. And I know he was doing it for heel purposes, but it was practically embarrassing to hear it and Shivani and Scott Hudson were even blowing him off, which was kind of funny. Uh, it wasn't a bad opener. Uh, Alex Wright and Disco Inferno show up, and then Jindrak pins Kidman 1, 2, 3. Because we just can't be rid of Disco Inferno. And then Scott Steiner uh, threatens Mike Sanders, the new commissioner, with violence if he does not give him Booker T tonight for the world title. And then Nash just looks on like, well, I'm getting paid uh, guaranteed money, and Sanders, you're a fucking idiot because you aren't going to have a good time as commissioner. And then we get Reno versus Kiwi's Glitter and Kiwi. Kiwi had an insane amount of glitter, an obscene amount of glitter on his body. And with a hardcore title match, um, Reno had taken out um, Paisley recently, and Kiwi was upset. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. And we had a pink trash can. We had kendo sticks, a mop, and the thrillers show up when they're battling on the stage. They toss Kiwi into the ring and then roll the dice one, two, three. Because the thrillers were all over this goddamn program. And then we get Mean Gene interviewing, uh, I know, General Rexham, I'm calling him Hugh Morrison, MIA, and then others come out to celebrate his U.S. title win. They're all happy, all his years in wrestling, and he finally achieved his dream of becoming U.S. champion. I mean, whatever, the U.S. title uh, was prestigious. Certainly wasn't by this point. Even though there were some good people that held it, Lance Storm, hence why I got that shirt back there. But <clears throat> this... This segment, it, they were treating him more like he, like he won the presidency, for God's sakes. It was just kind of hilarious. And then Goldberg shows up and offers his appreciation and says, Well, the streak had to start somewhere. Nice little call back there. And then Storm shows up on the big video screen, the Nitro Vision, if you will, and wants another shot. And Hugh Morris says, Hey, you already got it. We're going to face off a mayhem one-on-one. -on -one. And then the limo with the new CEO is in the parking lot, and David has the DNA results, because we can't be rid of this DNA First Blood match with Buff Bagwell. We just can't be rid of all this shit. Buff is not the daddy, because David got his blood and Buff's blood, and probably everybody's blood and fluids mixed in with that. David was not a good TV personality. Now, he never should have been on a wrestling program at all. He tried. He wasn't a very good wrestler. He was also young, and you could tell he really didn't want to do it. And he was out of the... I think he was out of wrestling by, what, 03, 04 at the, at the latest? And then I know he appeared on some of the earlier uh, NWA TNA pay-per-views. But anyway, uh, here's M.I. Smooth. Uh, he's upset because of what David did to him, attacking him when he got the tape and the money. And then he has a match with him, beats him up, Bull Nelson Bomb, one, two, three. The former Ice Train was beating David Flair on a Nitro in late October of 2000. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious why this company was dead by this point. Jimmy Hart then offers to face any radio DJs, men or women, on Nitro. Because he's faced Man Cow a few times. You know, that radio DJ that nobody fucking cared about outside of the Chicago area. So then the Boogie Knights show up. Why are they here? Yeah, that's a good question, Disco. Why are you here? Then Goldberg shows up, chases him out of the ring. And then, well, it's pretty obvious promos were not his strong suit. Uh, you're all next. Oh, you were next. Oh, yeah, I'm going to beat all you meanie heads up. And it was just him saying that. And then he's going to equal the streak, beat the streak. Even though since Russo's out of power, why didn't they just nullify that and keep him around? Because him trying to equal the streak, it just got ridiculous. Like, he was winning two, three matches on, like, one Nitro or Thunder. And it was absolutely stupid. So then we get Mike Sanders showing up as a new commissioner. 
and it'll be Booker versus Awesome versus Scott Snyder tonight since Mike Awesome beat Vampiro on the pay-per-view and got his and got his fair shot, which was fine. That that totally made sense. And I believe Awesome actually had gained a number one contendership uh, spot on the previous Nitro. I'm going to be honest right now in the middle of this review that I did review a lot of that stuff ahead of time because I had to watch a G1 and everything, so you'll forgive me if there's just a couple things that I have to catch up on because I hadn't reviewed in a goddamn month because... My time was limited, and I had to binge watch all this stuff. But anyway, by that point, I mean cre creative and all this stuff in WCW. Nobody fucking remembered any of this shit. Uh, Rick Blair shows up as a new CEO, and then he runs Sanders down. Even though he puts him over as good young talent, he says, "Hey, you know, it's going to be a new set of rules, and because you broke the rules, you get to face Miller tonight. No outside interference." But the commissionership was not on the line. Well, I mean, since Rick's a new CEO, he controls the company, and then. He addresses Luger's actions, said he uh, wanted Luger to watch out for David Flair's best interests, hence why he attacked Buff Bagwell and why David Flair did what he did and, you know, got the blood from Buff. The Buff blood, if you will. And then Jarrett shows up, runs down Rick's age. Just At this point, Jarrett was just insufferable. He was never going to be a main event guy at all. And that, then that segment ends. Luger's here. He's reinstated. And he never had a leg to stand on when he did his promos. And then he calls out Goldberg. I'm next. And then he calls out. He mentions Buff. And here's Buff. And they have a match. It doesn't last very long. Blockbuster's the ref by accident. And then they go outside. We have chair action from Luger. And then a rack for the win. Even though the ref was down. And you would have thought that he would have known that Buff did not attack him intentionally. But referees apparently were idiots. And still are kind of idiots, depending on how they're uh, used or how they're told to act in matches. And then we get Stasiak saying he's a thriller through and through. We get to find out that is not the case when he teams up with Chuck Colombo as Perfect Event versus Chronic. And Coach Nash, Coach Nash on commentary. That is hard to say. Um, yeah, he just asses off on commentary. Stasiak eventually gets frustrated and leaves. And then Palumbo gets beat with high time. One, two, three. And then Nash uh, takes the thrillers to go after Stasiak, while Sanders goes off on his own to face uh, Ernest Miller. Ernest Miller runs down Mark Madden, which I loved. And it's bad because I really don't care for Ernest Miller, but this was funny. And then Sanders versus Miller, not good. B-liner kick, one, two, three. And then Shane yells at Miller and then attacks Miss Jones. Just Hayner with probably the safest goddamn backbreaker there ever was. I mean, to be fair, it's not like you wanted to lay it in. You don't want to actually hurt somebody who's a non-wrestler. But... He, he's checking on him and everything. Scott Steiner comes down and runs down Booker, I think. Promos were never Scott Steiner's best thing, as entertaining as they were, because he didn't make a lot of sense. But he really was, he, he believed what he said, or at least you thought he believed what he said, even if it didn't make any sense. And then they face off in the three ways. Steiner, Awesome, and Booker is fine. Awesome shows up a few minutes into the match. We get a table bump, an officer's table bump. Uh, eventually, even though uh, Scott has a recliner on Awesome, bookend on Mike Awesome, one, two, three, and him and Scott have a brief skirmish. They're going to face off the mayhem. Booker says, hey, we can face off any time you want. Scott's about to head to the ring, and we go to black. So that's it right there. Yeah, I still got five more months of this shit, just under five months. Oh, thank God. I got to binge watch a whole bunch of this stuff, so expect a bunch more retro reviews in the coming weeks. Agree, disagree, what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.